What are you doing? Thinking about. Hello, 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 <laughs> hey, welcome back to our stupid Rex. It's I'm Corbin. I'm Constantowata. And you can follow us on Instagram, <laughs> Twitter for more juicy content. It's so, so juicy. Personal person YouTube channel in the description below. Today Wait. we're doing a video. Why is your mistletoe have red berries and not white? I don't know. Uh, this is called The Anatomy of a Great Actor. Ah, uh, yes. Well, uh, oh, I believe this is actually the same channel we did of the Gangs of Wasipur. Uh, We're actually talking about the craft, not the actual physicality of the person's body. I suppose. You want to read this? Yes. No, not that. Acting is one of the most integral part of cinematic storytelling. That's true. Yep. Yes, it is. This video explores the craft of acting, what qualifies, no, what qualities define a great actor. Much has been said about how cinema is the medium for the director, but if director plays the god, then the actors are the one fighting it out in the trenches to the bittersweet end. Interesting. This video essay may not resonate with popular beliefs, but showcases the importance of minute details of the artistry that is acting. Cool. Okay. Uh, we're always about, um, you know, talking about acting and... And stuff like that. Nothing tickles my fancy more. Don't talk about your fancy here, please. To talk about, I, there's truly nothing I can, I mean, there are a few things that are like uncom comparable, but nothing more that I like talking about and studying and acting. Um, and once again, this is the, the same, I believe, the same channel that did, you can tell me if I'm wrong, that did the Gangs of Wasp for behind the scenes kind of thing that we saw. Yeah. A lot of people apparently like this channel, so it's a very underrated channel. So here we go. Like cinema is or movies, you don't have to. Lawrence uh, Doesn't necessarily move the camera, uh, the human face, the story being told by a person in the frame is the key thing, just completely. And if it isn't there for me, I mean, for me, it doesn't work. That's the case with most people, I guess. The technicalities like camera movement, sound design, and editing are all well, important, well, no doubt. But they're all used with no respect one. to the performance of an actor. Directors funnel their narrative through actors. But acting in cinema can be a little tricky because you act for the camera, not for the real audience. Why don't you give me some advice? I'll just tell you something. Don't act. You don't have to act. Stop acting. Don't push it on camera. Let the camera do the work. Correct. Actually, I mean, That's general, why I just, just keep gas. simple. Do less. However, in Hindi mainstream cinema, doing more is considered as the right way of acting. And the popularity of this method has led to a lot of actors being hailed as great actors when they are at the most good or average oh, or dang. simply garbage. <laughs> Over the course of 100 years, the nature of film acting changed significantly. Acting in Give me streetcar named the Desire. 20s and the 30s and the 20s was about glamour. Acting during the war, the war affected acting in film. That and, then, and then people, it became about strength. Hey, and then in the anti-heroic period, it became about having the private moment in public. And, and then now we've arrived at another place where uh, great acting is to be physically fit. Uh, <laughs> fitness is great acting in the movies. There. However, yeah, I know. certain characteristics remain constant throughout this period. First of which is believability. Thank you! An actor can use a lot of crutches to oversell certain emotions. No. Like freezing facial muscles to sell the act of oh. crying, or flaring nostrils to show anger. These are the moments when actors want you to believe what they are doing. But great actors make you believe in the emotions they portray. Good choice of an actor. They do that by putting a lot of effort into building the character by way of fusing their own personality into that the personality of the character. That's freaking Abraham. Because ultimately, the primary objective is to recreate private moments in public. Who's that? Would you recreate private behavior in front of a crew of 100 people? I mean, really recreate it. Really lose your mind. Really break your heart. Really do this. Make it happen in front of us. But being believable is not oh. enough. The next important thing is being unpredictable. Audiences are smart when it comes to predicting character action. Touch. Even if an actor builds the character, the chances of her becoming predictable are quite high. These are the moments when audience say that the acting was flat. What they really mean is that the actor failed to surprise them. 
Great actors build a great sense of mystery around them. So even when you know and understand the character, you never get an idea how they are going to react to certain situations. You talking to me? Throughout The Godfather Part 1 and 2, Michael never acts out any violence himself. Therefore, this moment comes across as a great surprise. Improv. The middle moment is when an introverted and seemingly innocent Hana emphatically oh, justifies her action of letting people die. We couldn't just let them escape. We couldn't. We were responsible for them. Of course, this all stems from great writing. Thank you. But it is up to an actor to elevate written words into something that is quite palpable. Here's an excerpt from There Will Be Blood for comparison. Oh, I was lost, but now I'm found. I have abandoned my child. Yeah, this is so good. Say it louder. Say it louder. I've abandoned my child. I've abandoned my child. I've abandoned my boy. No. Performances of this caliber can happen so only when an actor allows herself to be affected by the material from inside out. When she allows herself to be vulnerable in front of the camera. Take a minute. Bad actors guard themselves <laughs> with an aura of invincibility. I love the actors who pulls up the at these different Or the baggage times. of their previous success, or sell their eccentricities in the name of acting. It always keeps them as a distant performer. Come Whereas down, great actors will always share parts of themselves they keep hidden from the world. True. With each new character, they put a different version of themselves in that character. Yes. It can be ugly, it can be mean, lonely, scared, sorrowful, or devastating. None of the great moments occur on their own. Great acting is a teamwork. And for the teamwork to produce great results, Ugh. an actor <laughs> needs to be ridiculously good at listening. How important is listening? That is the most important thing of all. But That's it's everything. It's essential, you know. I would put that very high on the list of things. It's certainly the most important thing is in acting. I uh, think the like... listening is the first thing you can learn. If you can't listen, then you can't you, you can't do it. An actor who knows how to listen is an actor that as a director you can cut to any time. How do you do it? And she said, well, I just listen. And you listen. Once you listen, it's like a tennis game. To me, uh, listening is so many brilliant actors. being able to be changed by the other person. <clears throat> it's not hearing them. It's not <laughs> waiting for your cue. It's not, when are they going to stop so hey, I can talk? Good call. <laughs> it's letting them in. Listening is important because at the heart of hearts, great acting is great reacting. Disagree. And to react with right expressions and natural timing, you need to listen. I mean really listen. And when it's done properly, you get moments like these. <laughs> This in fact is a perfect scene to understand the difference between great acting and soulless acting. Here, Pawad and Siddharth look like waiting to say their lines with same expressions and same intensity. Whereas Rajat Kapoor and Ratna Pata seem to react to every line spontaneously and differently, gradually intensifying the scene. They are not just saying dialogue. They are actually having a verbal fight and they mean every single word. But delivering dialogue is just one of the many things an actor has to do. In fact, for average actors, saying dialogue in a stylistic manner is a job well done. Whereas for great actors, saying their lines is incidental. The real deal is the way they use their entire body. Now there's a misconception that has grown over the years that extreme physical transformation has become a parameter for great acting. Gaining or losing weight or adopting different accents are all important, no doubt. But ultimately, they're external factors. Sometimes they are minute details and sometimes an ornament. The secret lies in how mm. actors use their entire body to that build their performance. Gets me every time. How do they move within a frame or with respect to the camera? How do they vary the timbre of their voice for different characters? These decisions add a great deal of depth to their performance. In There Will Be Blood, Daniel day Lewis uses aggressive postures and a spring in his movement to portray dominance. Whereas in Lincoln, his slouched shoulders and slow movement portrays the weight of responsibility. Those are ancillary. Notice his voice in both the films. One night I'm going to come to you inside of your house, wherever you're sleeping, and I'm going to cut your throat. <laughs> We're stepped out upon the world stage now. Now! With the fate of human dignity in our hands. If you're going to work in the creative field of any kind, you give yourself over to that. 
in the aviator, Kate Blanchett uses a high-pitched voice to match Hepburn's timbre. She's a zoologist, but it's all tied up inside the body, don't you find? But as in Carol, her graceful voice expresses Show her as Bob Dylan, right? You have no idea how pleased I am for you. And this is just a ridiculous level of brilliance. Uh, you, you uh, already know one of the, the greatest shapeshifters. <laughs> I don't understand it in the final scene when the bell hat told me I had a phone call. I miss him so Now consider all these parameters. Believability, unpredictability, vulnerability, ability to listen and react, so and the use of body. So versatile. Now can you apply all of them in the same scene? Of course you can. In this scene, Shape wants to invite Fernandez to his wedding as his guardian. But he hesitates as their relationship hasn't even reached the level of friendship. So he sets up entire context before reaching the point. It is believable because that's the way people approach conversation with power hierarchy. In addition, Sheikh's serious approach to the conversation contrasts his over-enthusiastic personality portrayed in the film till this point, which is quite surprising. His vulnerability is also at display as he indirectly talks about his loneliness, which is accentuated by the way he continues to look down in his plate. But if you're thinking yeah, about looking down at the and plate, all this while, Fernandez listens to him carefully, gets affected by his words, and accepts the invitation. Now that is great acting. Another important criterion to define a great actor was Pretty noted sure by Stella Adler. Act. To paraphrase her, the greatest talent of an actor lies in her choices. That, I think, stands above everything. Every single acting technique and its implementation depends on the choice an actor makes. It is the primary reason behind actors getting trapped in a loop of self-aware redundancy and actors constantly pushing their limits through a variety of characters. It is the difference between actors continuously playing it safe by selecting characters with moral high ground and actors who continuously play risky characters due to moral gray areas. Talent for making right choices, Whatever. daring and risky choices is what helps an actor build not just a great filmography but a legacy through their movies. Are you sure of that? So the next time you watch an actor perform, don't accept anything that is not believable and truthful. Because the primary job of an actor is to hold the mirror up to society. In that process, if they entertain you, that's fine. If it earns them a lot of money, that's fine. But they should, under all circumstances, hold the mirror up to society. Through their portrayal of characters, we the audience examine our own lives. So it is an actor's responsibility to be truthful. They owe it to the script and to the audience. And for those of you who are at an early Depends stage the of the of acting film. career, here's a bit of advice. Live in front of people. Live in front of people. Let them see the good, the bad, oh, the ugly, voice. the weak, the strong, the conflicted, the terrible. One of the things about acting that I that gives me the greatest satisfaction is the opportunity for that emotional exercise. Before we get into the video, I want to say a little tweet I saw the other day about Harrison Ford. Somebody asked him, he said, do you believe your character in whatever the most current one uh, Star Wars was? Mm. Uh, do you believe he was a force ghost? And he said, I don't know what the fuck a force ghost is and I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I love that he's just become yeah. a grumpy old man. Anyways, That's great. I, overall, I think it was a very good video. Uh, in terms of what it was saying. Obviously, there's a lot of debate <laughs> between certain points he was making. Overall, I think he was making the correct points, but there's obvious, acting is a very broad subject in terms of, so like when he brought up Renvere in terms of using extrins, ex, 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 what, is it, what is the word, extravagancies or whatever. Uh, and, and I yeah. think he was in Ramlila. That's what that film called for. So sometimes, obviously, being a Nawazuddin level, believable, like, in your face is not always required. No, is the it, script it, doesn't call for it. Is it always appreciated? Yes. And is that, obviously, as an actor, what you should be to do is try to be um, believable in the moment? Yes. But... I think it depends. Uh, I don't give a crap if everyone's believable in Spaceballs. Yeah, and I... Uh, you can't tell me Jim Carrey is not a great actor in in, in great example in uh, I don't need every him, film. In, I don't need him to be believable in. I just need him to be liar funny. liar. Yeah, I need him to be Jim Carrey. Yeah, I right. need to be funny. At, same with uh, Will Ferrell. So obviously, that's not what this. This was more focusing on 
the very dramatic Daniel Day-Lewis style of acting, which I think for the most part, yes, I, I, I agree with most of it. There's obviously some debate with certain things he said, but I think it was overall a good video. I think it was overall a good video. It yeah. does. It had a mix of some things that are spot on and some other things that are dangerously off. Yeah. In terms of if you're an actor and you're applying some of those things, it, I I made the mistake early on in working out out outward in instead of inward out as okay. an actor. Yeah. So for example, I remember watching myself in. There was this old show called the uh, the. Uh, the judge, mm -hmm. where they take legal cases that they reenact. Yeah. And I played this guy who's on trial, a young guy being accused of having murdered this family. And you're not supposed to know that he did it until the very, very end. And I remember one of the things I wanted to do was take on an affectation that Jack Nicholson had in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Gotcha. Did you hear what I said by take on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember watching myself at one moment, and there's a moment where they're in the script, they're talking, and I'm listening to the defense, and I knew the camera was on me. And I, I did this as I was as the scene was happening, I'm listening and I went, you know why I did that? Mm. Why I opened my mouth? Because Jack did that in a scene, One Floor Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Absolutely 100% wrong rationale behind why you should do something. Yeah. Because that wasn't believable. That was me putting on an affectation in order to try to exude something from another actor versus being that guy on trial, listening, and everything that I did came from that moment. I think that's what the fully video full was absorption trying to say, though, is that because that's why he brought up Irfan Nawazov and Bunkas Trivathi, and obviously all the other great American and British actors. Yeah, but like even as well. even when you point out, like when you point out the brilliance of what Daniel Day Lewis can do with the transformations in his voice, uh, I promise you, his goal wasn't to think I'm going to make a, a character with a great voice. Mm -hmm. He wasn't thinking that one bit. I promise you, he was thinking, who is this person? How do I find myself in them? What do they sound like? And everything about it. Because I know the first thing he worked on with Lincoln was the voice. And he sent a, a piece of it. He, he read, he spent a year in prep just reading. Mm -hmm. And he sent the voice template to Steven Spielberg on a cassette that said, for your ears only. And he said, this is where I think um, so his... And it was all built on what he heard people wrote about Lincoln's voice. It was never once, how can I make an affectation on this character? It was, how can I become this character and do justice? So that's where all that stuff about being believable, being truthful. One thing he, he didn't talk about, which Irfan is the, the quintessential master at, mm -hmm. is the two, uh, alongside believability, is effortless and ease. Yeah. And you can't fake that. No. You either are going to be at ease and effortless or you're not. Mm -hmm. And it's it's freaking crazy difficult. Yeah. <laughs> no one does it better than Irfan. No one does it better than Irfan. Pankaj is pretty close. He's he's a pretty effortless actor himself. Very effortless actor. Uh, but yeah, no one I've ever seen is just as... Like, they don't even look like they're trying. Because yeah, they're, they're not. Yeah. yeah. Because they're just that. Like, they are... Yeah, Meryl's there. Al Pacino's there. Uh, yeah. uh, there's a lot of work I've seen a lot of people do that have that level of effortless and and ease. Dustin Hoffman um, and finding yourself in the role. There's so many actors get caught up in what a trainer of mine used to call just the tools. And she was my she was probably the best acting trainer that I had had at the time. Her name was Christy Martin because I would do something that students and other people would be like, "Wow!" and she'd say, "Do it again." And this time, don't use your tools. I don't want to see you use your tools because you know it's going to work and you can pull the wool over their eyes. You're not going to fool me, Rick. Do it again. Mm -hmm. And then the whole class would have been like, wow, that was brilliant. She was like, bullshit. Do it again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the kind of acting coach you need. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, overall, very good video. Um, I brought up... <laughs> It's actually quite funny the way it ed they edited it. Because obviously, they <laughs> so, and every, every time I talked about like a bad, bad actor, actor, it was like Salman, Salman Khan. Khan. <laughs> so clearly, this guy has opinions. Strong about, opinions. Uh, I don't know that I fully agree with Amir uh, uh, with what he was. He brought up Amir at a certain time where he was almost talking like down a little bit, right? As if all the only choices he ever makes are for the moral high ground. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't uh, that's not the vibe I've gotten. No, because the same here. thing it could be. You could be accused for the same thing that Tom Hanks always chooses characters that take the moral yeah. high ground. Um, yeah, and there's 
And because there are roles that are attractive to some actors more than others. Mm -hmm. And they don't do it because it's what they're expected of. It's because that's the kind of role that they're attracted to. And you see a particular niche for them. It's like you tend to be attracted, like Anurag tends to be attracted to doing dark film. Mm -hmm. And he has said, um, just that's what I do. Yeah. That's what I like doing. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Uh, so uh, let us know uh, any other videos like this that we should react to. Uh, so, uh, I do love that more we've, of them. We've um, interviewed a bunch of the actors they said were the great actors of India. Sadly, we wouldn't yeah. be able to get interview Irfan. And I, I know, uh, and I'm that. getting uh, for Christmas, but it's taking a while to get to me, is that book on uh, the Indian method acting book. Oh, cool, cool, Yeah, cool. it's on the way. I can't wait to read that. That'll be great. Let yep. us know more videos from track you down below. Look, my head's